This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off free shipping and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Hey, what about that Angel Chronicles podcast? It's almost done for the season. Aww. <laughs> All right, Lilith, you'll still have me to talk to every week. I know. But anyway. Like Angel and Archie are my favorite things to talk about. You want to talk about Archie. Really? Maybe we'll talk Archie one day. Anyway, you can talk Charlie Esther about Archie. I know. But anyway, we're here to talk about your other favorite thing, Angel. Anyway, I am Phil. And of course, that lovely young lady over there is... Y'all. She fell through a portal. Now she's queen of the uh, podcast. No, queen of Florida. What? Queen of Florida? Yeah, Florida woman. <laughs> yeah, green people. Sounds about right. <laughs> anyway, yes, we are back to discuss Angel season two, episode twenty-one, through the looking glass. Hmm. Original air date May fifteenth, two thousand and one. Oh, something bad's happened to Angel. Must be me. <laughs> that skin hey. condition. Hey, you want to know a fun fact? Sure. You might not know. Sure. Did I'll... you know Joss Whedon is in this episode? Uh, I believe I did hear that. It wasn't he Numfar? Yep, he did the dance of joy. And I, was, I just every time somebody says that, I can't help but think of freaking Perfect Strangers. Happy, happy joy. <laughs> Fred and Stimpy? No. I know. They did that on Perfect Strangers too. But you said happy, happy, joy, joy. Fred and Stimpy. First two seasons are great. You idiot. So anyway, yeah. So this yeah. episode is um this is um part two in the three parter. Yes. This is the middle chapter. The gang um, the gang's still stuck in Pilates. <laughs> Uh, this is the, I think last episode might have been the, yeah, I think last episode was only the episode in, no, it's this episode is the only episode in either Buffy or Angel to not have any scenes on the earth. Hmm. So yay for Angel, always breaking barriers in the Buffy verse. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, they came through the portal last episode, they, spoilers, yeah, they get home back on, yeah. So, you know, the three stooges are shocked to see Cordelia, and she's like, <laughs> off with their heads. And she's like, no, 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 just kidding, just kidding. And the then, fruit? of course, she has to monologue about how she came to be the ruler. Yes. About the visions and the, and the prophecy. Yeah. And then Angel, like, can see himself in the mirrors, and he's, like, being a little broody boy. Like, why did no one tell me? I was like, Spike tells you all the time. What do you mean? He's like, that's from that hair's from the portal, right? He's like, like she's like, oh, no, no. no, it's always like that. Great, that's my favorite scene, actually. And then she jokes, so she jokes about off with their heads, and they're about to cut their heads off. She's like, no, 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 kidding. So then Lauren takes Angel back to his family's house, and then they're like, they're like, go away, Lauren, and then. They're like, cause, yes, because he's a traitor because he left. But then his cousin Lance is like, Angel saved my life. And so Angel gets to be, you know, a celebrated hero. Yes, he gets, he, yes. he gets to swing the Kreble and the Bacchanal. Like, everywhere you go, got to be a Bacchanal. <laughs> so, yeah, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they show up, and he's like, um, they're beheading humans, and it happens to be Fred, and I'm just like, okay, gross, thank you. Humans taste nasty, like, why would you, why would you ever do this? We're disgusting. Not the pry, <laughs> not the pry little hellfire, but how do you know that humans taste terrible? Okay, so, like, of course, I didn't Google it. I made my friend Google it. I was like, I cannot be on one more watch list with my Google, okay? So now, like, there's, like, people that have actually eaten human meat, and you read those stories. And- yeah, serial killer. <laughs> exactly. You're going to believe so, a serial killer? Um, yeah. That's what, 
That's like that's like people. That's like when people say, "Oh, that ta- oh, we got to clean it up for the podcast." Okay, Rob. Uh, you know when people say, "Oh, that, you know something tastes like poop," and it's like, "How do you know what poop tastes like?" You're a parent. You never accidentally got <laughs> no <laughs> terrible, horrible stories, which makes me never want to have a crash goblin. What people eat their kids' poop? What? <laughs> yeah. No, when he was young, we had to change the diaper, or even got to wipe his butt. Now, no, the first thing you do is wash your hands, fool. Some people actually don't wash their hands and it's gross. Ew. AKA, I see you at work and I'll just change your name, Karen. <laughs> I didn't hear that water running. I'm just saying. It's was it that Seinfeld episode? It's like, at least try to fool me. At least make you know, turn the water on. At least make the attempt to fool me. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> but yeah. So I was just like, whoa, that got that escalated quickly. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, Andrew refuses and he um, grabs Fred and then Lauren helps with the escape by singing Stop in the Name of Love. And this is where we learn that there's no music and it causes pain to Lauren's people. Well, yeah. Like, how did he overcome? Well, he, he said he was always he's special. Well, no, he's he, I think last episode he said he was always different. He's like, he, yeah. you know, he, he thought he had ghosts in his head and it wasn't until he came to, uh, you know, our dimension that he realized, hey, that's music. and Yeah. Oh, isn't that sweet? Oh, I think it is. I think, ah, uh, didn't he mention that last episode? We forgot to mention that, uh, he said when he came, that when he, when he came to, uh, you know, our dimension, that's where the, that's where he was first. The portal dropped. Yeah, that building was empty. Yeah. yeah. And that's why the portal was cold because he came through it and then that demon came through it and then his cousin came through it. Yeah. And then they sucked them back to the cousin. Yeah, and then, or do you guys send back? Yeah. So, while they're doing that, Wesley's being a damn nerd in the castle library. Boy, it's happy that way. True. So, there's something about a cum shuck. And I'm like, um, what? With a goose lug? Oh, yeah. Even Gunn says, that sounds dirty. <laughs> and it kind of technically is. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a mating thing. Yeah. So, he's like, oh, maybe I should ask the priest to translate this book and then he sees that there's a three volume book marked with a different animal on the cover of each volume. One is a wolf, ram, and a heart. Now for those of you that don't know, that don't hunt, male is the equivalent uh, in in the deer world, like doe and heart. Yeah. So was that this episode? Yeah. That's that, they, episode. that they mentioned the three? Okay. But yeah. So, but uh, if yeah, you everyone get it, wolf, ram, heart, wolf, Ram heart. Yeah, and so then it's like the books and the priests probably have some connection to the law firm back in Los Angeles. Oh, this like, I'm not gonna trust them. And of course, the dude, that's the dude named Silas in TV shows. Apparently, they're always evil. <laughs> Just watch the guy named Silas in real life, let alone TV. Exactly. And so Silas is like. Tells Cordelia, hey, the Grease Lug has been summoned and the cum shuck is a coming. Hey, who wrote this episode? Because I'm just like, Tim Manier, he also directed it. I just like, does it? I don't want to. Okay, we're going to skirt the line here. Doesn't calm shock sound so? Oh, yes. Too close to something? <laughs> yes, 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 it does. Little favorite kind of adult entertainment. If done properly, perhaps. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm surprised. You know, it could I guess it could be worse. Well, I don't know if it'd be worse or not, but you know, could have been like, oh, uh, you know, you have to mune shot with the gruselog. <laughs> oh yeah. So you know, Wesley and Gunn and Cordelia try to escape through a sewer, but Cordelia gets caught and dragged back to her throne, and she's like, I don't want to mate with the demon. And then we see the grease bug, and um, it's Mark Lutz. Hello, and hello, Megan. And then, and then she's like, "Oh, okay, I guess I'll do." <laughs> but I just, oh. I love the scene where you know she's trying to get out of the castle with uh, Wesley and Gunn, and she's like carrying all, all that treasure like she found <laughs> in the castle. And he's like, "Yeah, I was like, who are you, Cartman? What, what are you doing?" I know, but then, she, but then I love Gunn's like. He's like, you're not going to fit out the door with all that booty. She's like, what? He's like, no, that, what you're carrying. <laughs> yeah, that's the last thing you want to say to a white girl in 2001. That's for sure. 
I don't think you want to say that to any woman in any year. You can't. You're not going to fit out the door with all that booty. I don't know, man. Have you have you been on Instagram? I think that's a compliment to some girls nowadays. I'm just saying. That's true. I'm sorry. I forgot the Kardashians. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Life is straight up crazy in 2019. Simpler times, man. Anyway, so Fred took Angel to a cave for some alone time. (laughs) She's like all like talking crazy and she's scribbling on the cave and then he finds her driver's license and like, oh snap, this is the girl from Courtney's vision. And is that advanced physics? (laughs) And she's like, you know, I don't want it to be real, you know, because otherwise I'm trapped here for five years going through this crap for real. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. He's like, but uh, I'll, I'll rescue you. The handsome so man they, saved her. I'm saying, yeah, awkward. Um, I was like, you're not a blonde, honey. Sorry. <laughs> um, so they make their way to the castle, but then they get attacked by guards. And this is the part that kind of freaked me out. Um, to fight them, Angel shifts into his vampire mode. But uh, that ain't his usual vamp face. And he straight up becomes a demon. And this like a green creature with like, spikes and these ridges. And he starts just like ripping through the guard's body with those teeth, and I'm oh, like, well, "Damn!" Did he like rip his leg off or something? Yeah. Yeah. Although, although in the wide shot, you can clearly see that he still has both his legs as they're fighting. Just saying. I know, but I just love Fred. You know, she, you know, she was all happy. She had this handsome protector, and then she's like, "Bad things always happen here." <laughs> yes, exactly. And so then, like, Wesley and Gunner wandering around, and they're looking for Angel, and then they re- they see a green demon wearing Angel's clothes, and the demon attacks Gun, and then Wesley sees Angel's tattoo, and he calls him, and he's like, oh, crap, he's not responding to his name. This is no good. And then Fred, like, coats her hand in blood like the crazy chick she is, and did, lures him away from his friend. Did she have, like, a whole bag of it or something? Or or was there a dead animal? Or, uh, she I think something. it was a dead animal. Maybe. That would make more sense. Or maybe it was, like, the guard that he ripped through. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. So, yeah. And then Wesley helps Gunn with his wounds, and they're like, oh, crap, we're in an alternate dimension. And Angel's not really in control, so his straight up pure, unadulterated inner demon is running him up. Well, yeah, I think Wesley said like the balance wasn't there. That's why he can walk around in the sunlight and stuff. Like his his human side is more human, but when he tries to shift in the vampire mode, it go, he goes yeah. full because he got, his, yeah. guns like that's what the thing inside him looks like. He's like that's nasty. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So is, the, it, is that what it looks like, really, or is that only what it looks like in that dimension? Well, I guess that's because he does mention I, we do that inner demon does get a good fight next season. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I guess that's what it looks like, but it's like in our dimension, it can never fully manifest itself because yeah. it's always bonded to like a human or whatever. But hey, David Boreanaz got his Hulk Hulk moment. <laughs> exactly. Too bad it was a stunt man. That man that was very clumsy because he fell, but I'll let it go. Um, cut to Fred's cave. Demon Angel sees his reflection in the water and then like, ugh, I gotta get back to human form. And, you know, he's like, crap, they saw me like this. I can't go back. And she's like, no, 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 we're We're going back. We're getting the hell out of here, mister. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you mean there's a way out? I ain't living in this cave for another five years. So then we cut to the forest and Gunn and Wesley are um, like surrounded and get tied up by rebel humans who are like, we're going to send a message to the castle. And I think that Wesley and Gunn are spy cows. And they're like, we know the princess. You should use us to get in contact with her. They're like, yeah, we're going to do that by cutting your head off and shoving a note in your mouth with your severed head. I'm like, yep. well, that escalated quickly. Going to put their heads on sticks. Yeah. I mean, as you do. <laughs> So, cut to the gruesome blood telling Cordy that, you know, his human qualities make him unappealing to his people. So, he's, like, battled with demons to, like, basically suicide by demons. But he killed them, and he ended up becoming, like, this super great warrior. And that's, like, what basically the title of gruesome blood means. Because he's brave and strong and hot. And so, Cordelia's like, okay, enough said. Let's do the do. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then Lorne Ch- they ca- you know they captured Lorne after he helped the Angel escape, and uh, yeah. Cordy has to but pardon him. him. Yeah. 
But then she's like, okay, go. <laughs> she's like, she's like, how are you? He's like, oh, not as good as you. He sees the crucial lock. He's like, you want the guards to come back with the, uh, with the cuffs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Courtney kind of explains that she's not a princess. But let's see. And so she's like, oh, maybe I should start writing proclamations and laws. And that does not make Silas happy because Silas is an F boy. <laughs> he just wanted a figurehead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Long chickled visions for that. But yeah, so like, you know, Lauren was like, where's Gunn and Wesley? And like Cordelia just like pushes him out the door. I know. So Silas being the F boy that he is, is super angry. And so he goes into her chamber with a platter and kicks the grist lug out. And, you know, he's like, you should do as you're told. And then Cordelia's like, bump that noise. And then she's shocked into Silas because Silas reveals Lauren's severed head on the platter. And I'm like, what? That's a cliffhanger. What? I know. I remember the first time I saw this, I was like, what? Well, that escalated quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I love how Cordelia's like, I, I really hate that I keep meeting demons who want to impregnate, impregnate me with their spawn. And yeah, I'm I, like, well, well, it happened. It finally happened eventually. <laughs> Well, hey, you wanted to be a hot chick in L.A. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like that Cordy mentions that her parents were bat- busted for tax fraud and that her trust fund dried. Oh, yeah, because the, the, the crucial logs say, like, his family, like, threw him out. And she's like, oh, my fa-, you know, they cast him out. And she's like, my parents were busted for tax evasion. I love Angel telling the stories to the Pylans because he's talking about the episode to Shansu in L.A. And then, of course, um... I fall to pieces. I was like, oh, because you land off like, hey, tell the story of the sorcerer who could remove his limbs and reassemble it. Well, oh yeah, that's not my favorite episode. But he calls Lindsay a lawyer beast. He's not wrong. Hey, he's not. Oh, I love that in um German. The title of this episode is a thorn for Cordelia, and in French, it's her Her Majesty Cordelia. <laughs> I was like, oh, I wish we could have got that in England. But yeah. Uh, solid episode. A little more funny. A little more quippy. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, gotta, gotta kill time to that finale. But it was still a pretty good episode. Oh, yeah. I didn't I didn't feel like it was like a filler episode. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the worst when a filler episode feels like a filler episode. <laughs> I mean, we got the Got to see the demon inside Angel. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I just always really in the Buffyverse wanted to know like the mechanics of dimensions and stuff. Like we really don't get into it in Buffy until like the second to oh well, yeah the last season basically, <clears throat> and they don't they barely mention it. So <laughs> it's just like so curious. I think they were just making it up as they went along. Yeah, very Joss Whedon thing to do. But yeah, this this one is a uh, A minus for me. Um, we got some action finally, and yeah. um, you know, points get bumped up for the Bruce look. Finally, something for the female gaze of this damn show. Like we got all these guys, and nobody takes their shirt off, which is probably why I fell in love with Arrow because like every dude takes his shirt off eventually. I mean, not not this season so much, but in season one, didn't Angel have his shirt off a couple of times? Yeah, but that's not like. <laughs> No offense to David Maria. <laughs> it's not like it's Stephen Amell quality abs, you know. <gasps> Demon gave me abs. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I appreciate the, yeah, you had something for for the female gaze, but I don't but know. But Cordy's like always rocking like a short top, tight jeans. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I'm just saying. Finally, something for the female gaze. On the I know. I, I don't know. I just never really got, I, I just never, like, felt the Grusalog character. I was just like, eh. Well, he's got, uh, what, four more appearances to go before we're rid of him. Oh, yeah. He, so, you know, yeah, he's, I know he's he in next season. Back. Yeah, next season. Yeah, I know. Awkward. <laughs> That's all that I can describe it as. It's just awkward. Mm-hmm. <sighs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> Did you uh, have a favorite scene? Um, I don't know. The, da- the dance of joy was pretty funny. Yes, I I actually like the action scene, and I I like Cordy um just drooling over Bruce Love. Like I I'm here for it. <laughs> I will come shock, calm shock now. 
Seriously, you can't say that without it sounding dirty. I know we can make anything sound dirty, but still. It's a gift, I know. <laughs> a gift we don't use wisely, by the way. It's okay. Well, I mean, we use it for podcasting. It's not like we're just sitting around the bar or something. Speak for yourself. Entertain the world. <laughs> well, you do both, but I'm just saying, it's you know, we're at least we're trying to entertain the world while we do it. Yeah, okay. You, you talked me into it. We, we use our gift back. It won't be taken away from us. Um, so yeah, do you agree with my A-minus, or? Um, I mean, it would probably go, like, B-plus. Like, the crystal like, was that hot. No, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, no, like I said, that, that character just annoys me, but, I mean, I mean, I'll probably go B-plus. Like I said, there were some humorous moments, you know, like you said, we did get some action, so it's good. All right. So, some shameless plugs, so we can maybe have some feedback for the finale. No pressure, people. That's right. Yeah, send us your thoughts for the finale of season. That's right. We're at the end of season two already. One more episode. But then remember, you can send your thoughts on any and all the Arrowverse shows. So, send. But again, if you don't make it in time, hey, I'll read I'll read some angel feedback on that. Uh, Legend next of the summer. I'll have to wait till next summer. Why? Yeah, I'll read on Air- Legend of the Arrowverse. Rebel. Yeah. All right. So, everyone, send us your thoughts. Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com. Uh, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Angel TV Podcast at Angel TV Podcast on Twitter. Follow CL Sidekicks on Instagram and check out Work in Progress. It's, it'll be nice. It won't turn into a demon right before your eyes. Capes and Lunatics. Org. You might you might be able to talk to it nicely, and it'll turn into a gruesome bug you can calm shop with. It'll it'll turn into a <laughs> handsome man, if that's your thing. Uh, <laughs> subscribe to the Capes and Lunatics YouTube channel and our weekly newsletter at capesandlunatics.home.blog. Call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can watch all of our stuff live on the Capes and Lunatics Facebook, Twitter, and at getvocal.com slash channel slash capes. Lilith Hellfire, where can people calm shock with you? <laughs> um, nowhere. <laughs> um, I just want to say that I will Virtual. not be happy <laughs> until our um, until our YouTube channel is has six, 69, 69 subscribers. <laughs> just can y'all make that happen for me? <laughs> soon um but until then you can find me on the interwebs on twitter via Lil hellfire and if you're on the gram you can find me at Lil hellfire 69 if you are one of our sidekicks or kids duh Ugh. not quite soft and not quite hard she lost her nipple for nothing i lost my nipple for nothing <laughs> Just R.I.P. To... Gary's nipple. R.I.P. You will oh, this, might, this might work for this episode, you know, since Angel transformed. Don't be a troll. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yes. One more, epi- one more episode in season two. Come back to the big finale. It's going to be a morning mind blower. That one's for Charlie. I was going to say, there's going to be at least two or three weeks where we might have our last couple of Angel episodes and Legends of the Arrow. So. Oh, God. Wackiness is too. Five days a week, baby. <laughs>